Hi, I'm Charles Forrester. I'm a Senior Defence Industry Analyst and Business Reporter with Jane's Defence Weekly. Uh, I'm here at uh, Textron Systems with uh, Bill Irby, who is the Senior Vice President and General Manager of Unmanned Systems at Textron. And we're here to talk about the, the company's new Night Warden system, which was unveiled yesterday. So, Bill, can you tell us about uh, some of the concepts behind this? How did this come forward as, as an idea for Textron? Certainly. Um, based on the shadow system, which is our tactile UAS that we've had out in the field for many years now, that system's got more than a million uh, hours on it operationally as of last year. So what we did was we took the lessons learned from the shadow, developed a concept in 2011 that we wanted to build out on and come up with the next generation system. That led to what was uh, the Shadow M2. So with the Shadow M2, we went through several prototype stages and we incorporated uh, messages from the customer, feedback that we got from the customer during a bunch of demonstrations, uh, as well as uh, just discussions with them, incorporated a number of new, new features, went through multiple prototype stages, and what we have today is the Night Warden. It's our production-ready tactical unmanned aircraft system. And can you tell us about some of the features of this, uh, maybe that have been improved over the, over the Shadow M2? Absolutely. Um, the, the Shadow M2, uh, let me go back to, before I do that, the Shadow system overall has a gross takeoff weight of 550 uh, pounds. So this system has a gross takeoff weight of 750 pounds. And again, that was come to after looking at what really were the missions and the customer feedback for a tactical level system. So we've got two versions of the Night Warden that have been developed over the prototyping period with the M2. Uh, the first version is a multi-sensor version where we can equip the aircraft with multiple payload balls. So full motion video, electro-optical and IR, we can have two of those systems plus additional payload space in the, uh, in the fuselage or we can fit one of, those, uh, one of those payload spaces with any type of sensor that the customer requires. The other option for the aircraft is to do a beyond line of sight or satellite communication capable aircraft. So we can fly beyond line of sight, we can operate with a hub spoke configuration where the operators, for example, may be in a country of origin uh, and the system could be fielded anywhere in the world and the operations could be conducted from that home station. Now I see also that the system has a, a strike capability on it as well. Yes. Can you tell us about that? Absolutely. What you see on the aircraft right now is the Textron Systems Fury weapon. Uh, this weapon we've actually dropped from the Night Warden before during flight test. Um, so we have gone through a number of, uh, of different tests with the system including weapons drop. So once the Fury is uh, in place and ready for operation, we are ready to host it on this aircraft. Uh, we've, we've put the pylons in place, the weapon hard points on the wings. The wings are equipped to, uh, to be able to incorporate it, as well as the logic in the system to be able to make sure that that happens and happens properly. And in discussion yesterday, you were talking about how you're focusing on operators as opposed to pilots. Right. Now, how does that translate into a, a cost benefit for operators uh, at the Department of Defense kind of level? Yeah, um, from a cost benefit standpoint, if you think of uh, the training program necessary for certified pilots, it's typically a one to two year uh, flight school type of training activity. Um, with the operators for this system, it's a multi-week school, just a matter of four to six months to get an operator fully certified to uh, fly this system. So what that translates to is reduced cost, uh, quicker fielding time with trained operators in the field uh, to fly this system. And how soon do you think we could see this in the skies? I would like to get in the skies immediately. Uh, as I said, it's production ready. Uh, we're in discussions with multiple customers right now. Um, we've got 400 hours of flight time on this system. So uh, when a customer uh, goes ahead, moves ahead with an order, uh, we are able to deliver the first systems in about a 12 month time period and then we'll go into whatever specific certification test the customer requires. And in terms of uh, operating capabilities, what are some of the test environments that you've gone through? Uh, hot and high? Uh, cold climate? Absolutely. We, uh, this system is able to fly at 15,000 feet density altitude. We have tested it in extreme hot temperatures. We've also tested it in, uh, in winter-like conditions. We've tested it in the rain. Uh, so we've been through a number of uh, different environments uh, for this system. So uh, again, we think it's a very adaptable system and ready to go and meet soldiers' needs. Excellent. Mr. Obi, thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. I appreciate it.